In this video, we're going to take 10 minutes to get acquainted and model something in plasticity, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are going to get acquainted with plasticity again. Now, as of yesterday, the 5th, Plasticity is now on sale. It's available for public consumption. So go to the description of this video, make sure that you download a 30-day trial and play around with it and see if it's a program that works for you. I had actually recorded a long video talking about the program, doing a general UI overview, sort of uh, orienting people to the program. But honestly, it's so intuitive. I don't think we even need that level of video. So what I'm going to do is we're going to jump in. We're going to go through the process and model something using some of the basic tools. We're not focusing on surfacing or sheets in this video. We're just going to cover basic solid modeling. So to get started, we're going to begin by deleting the cube. And then we're going to be using some shortcut keys. Anytime I use a shortcut key, I will put it on the screen. I'll try to also point out where they are in the UI so you can use them as well. So the number seven is going to allow us to look down from the top. You can also click the Z on the view cube in the upper right hand corner. We're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to create a center circle. Now, if you want to do this with precise input, you can start at the origin. You can tab over to the dimension in the dialog and let's say enter a value of two meters, hit enter twice, and then we're going to accept that. Then G on the keyboard, which is also the move command. Then we can move it a specified distance as well. In this case, let's say minus four meters, enter twice to accept. If you want to work a little bit quicker and you only care visually about how things are balanced, then we can just sketch on the, uh, in this case, the X axis and get it approximately right right click and say okay. You can always adjust these by grabbing onto that purple control point and moving it around, making the size and scale of everything how you expect to see it. For this example, it's also important to know that when you're adding things like lines and you're using tangency, after you add a tangent line, it is not associated with tangency to these circles or curves. So keep that in mind that there is sort of an order of operations that you should follow. So in this example, what I want to note is as we move around, there are a couple of snap points. For example, the intersection with this curve and the x-axis. There is a middle point here. And after we left click and begin dragging over, it tries to snap, in this case, parallel to x. We can also snap normal. And we also have keys in the bottom right hand corner where it tells us if we want to do things like normal or tangent, we can lock those in by hitting N or T on the keyboard. What we want to do in this case, however, is drag over until we see tan tan next to the cursor, and then we want to left click. I'm going to right click, and then I want to create another line, which is shift and A if you want to use the hotkey, but find where it says tan tan, right click, and now we've created this. We're going to use trim, which is also T on the keyboard to get rid of these inside curves, right click to accept, create center circles, right click to accept, center circle, right click to accept. And now we've created essentially a closed profile for the link that we're going to be creating. What we're going to do is begin pulling this up in 3D. And as we do, we're going to hit shift and T on the keyboard. Now what shift and T is going to allow us to do is essentially create a thin wall object without having to go through the process of creating those curves. So that's going to help us speed the modeling process along. We'll right click to accept. I no longer need the curves, so I'm going to shift select them and delete them. Then I want to begin adding some fillets by selecting the body, selecting all these vertical edges holding down shift. And again, if we pull one direction, we'll get a fillet. The other direction, we'll get a chamfer. So I'm going to pull it in to get a fillet right click and accept. The next thing that I want to do is I want to think about symmetry. I'm going to use the number one on the keyboard. You can also click on Y. Now, if I want to make cuts that are symmetric here, I need to think about how I create those curves and what references I use because there aren't any dimensions or sketches that we're doing. We have to think about these things slightly different than we would in a CAD program. So what I'm going to do is create a corner rectangle but I'm gonna do this by pulling it down all the way through, right click, we're going to select it, pull it all the way through, use W for difference, 
and we want to make sure that we select our target body. Now, if you happen to make a mistake like I did, I hit the wrong shortcut key, you're not out of luck because we can just simply select these objects using the Boolean queue. The target body is going to be this body here. We're going to use W difference and we're going to remove this one, right click and say OK. So even if you happen to make a mistake, you can always use other tools such as the Boolean operator, which is Q on the keyboard. Now what I want to do before I mirror this over is I want to add some additional details. I'm going to rotate this around and I want to add a fillet down here. And then these corners, I want to go ahead and add a chamfer here. Now keep in mind, this would be insane to try to manufacture, but that's not really what we're doing here. It's not our concern. Then I want to add any additional details that I might want, like a chamfer on the top. I'm going to hold down control and add additional edges to add those chamfers. Right click to accept. Then we're going to use mirror. Now with mirror, we need to select which direction we're going. This is a little bit different than selecting a plane. So as we're looking at it, you can see that Z is blue and we want to go in the Z direction. Now while we're doing this, also note that we can use Q on the keyboard to union or merge them together. Right click and say OK. And now we've created that one solid body. Now once again, we can do things like add fillets by dragging two or away. In this case, I'm going to add a chamfer and hold down control. And I'll do the same thing on these inside edges because I don't really care if this thing can be manufactured or not. We're going to right click, say OK. Number one on the keyboard or click Y. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a line from the origin and coming up, over, and down, and then back. Then what I want to do is I want to mirror this. So I'm going to be removing this from the object. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to do this in both directions. We're going to say minus 3.2, and you need to add the minus there. And then what we're going to be doing is we're not going to be removing or unioning or doing anything just yet. We're going to right click. Now we want to mirror this object. This is going to be about Z. I'm not going to worry about um, actually combining those at all. Get rid of the curve. Then we're going to select this body Q for our Boolean. We're going to be doing W for difference and the tool bodies are going to be both of these. Now notice that it's not like to me select both unless I hold down the shift key and then we can create this cutaway. So once again, the process is relatively quick and easy. We can sketch using these construction planes. We can also grab faces if we want to use this as a temporary construction plane. So for example, plane from this, I can use a rectangle here, right click, rotate, select the areas that I want. In this case, I want to um, sort of remove all of these and pull them down through. If we need to add more to the selection, we can always do that. If it's not cutting all the way through, make sure that you are using W for difference and select your target body. You can preview it on the screen, right click, select your curve, get rid of it. So all that, now we've got this temporary construction plane, just hit X and it's gone. Last thing that I wanna do before we wrap this up is I want to go ahead and add a couple chamfers here. So I'm gonna select these outside edges and then again, we can pull one direction for fillet, the other direction for chamfer. Right click, turn off x-ray mode, toggle on render mode, right click, change the appearance. And now we've created something that is fairly unique, only took us about seven or eight minutes. And it has a lot of these hard features that would traditionally be a bit tricky for us to do in a polygonal program like Blender. Not to say that it's impossible because I know comments will start flying. I can do hard modeling in Blender, it's not a problem. Yes, I understand that, but these kinds of things are much quicker and easier to do with true traditional CAD tools. Now, Plasticity has given us these CAD tools without the need to go in and develop all the sketches, the dimensions, and the constraints to drive them. So if you're looking to create unique objects that don't necessarily have to be prismatic like this, we can do some complex surface models as well then definitely check out Plasticity. Go to the description of the video, download your 30-day trial, give it a shot, ask any questions. And if the content that I'm creating here doesn't fit with your modeling approach, make sure that you do a search. There are tons of different channels covering this with a lot more experience than I have in Plasticity as well as in the visual effects industry. 
So with that in mind, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.